Hey, how's it going? In this video, we're looking at database performance issues, specifically RDS on AWS using Postgres. A bit of a backstory, at work, we recently imported 2.4 million records into a single table. This table is a company listing because essentially my company is Bumble for software engineers. You know, we do matchmaking. So we need the company information to attach to people's work experiences and also to attach to job. Anyway, we can query the company by name so people can build out their profiles. And and like a proper engineering department, we have a stage environment and a production environment. This was a new feature. And when we deployed to stage, for some reason, it was killing the database and causing timeouts. And as we all know, if it happens on stage, it most likely will happen on production. If not now, then maybe in the future when things scale up. So the question comes, how do we debug this? If you go into the AWS console, you'd be tempted to go into this monitoring tab over here. It does have quite a bit of information, but you know, it gets a little bit noisy. You can even add a bunch of other graphs as well. It might help, it might not. You probably have to know what you're doing to get the most of this. I don't know what I'm doing. So here we are. However, a better way to start looking at this is to go into the performance insight section. I already have stage loaded up and is looking at the exact time range where the issues are happening. What you actually need to do to get things started is to hit this timestamp, go to a relative range, click either the last five minutes or the last hour and start doing random things on your stage environment to try to trigger a bunch of queries. Once you do that, you can go below here. We'll get to this in a bit. You can actually see your top SQL queries. As you can see here, we got a couple of queries that are taking a million years. This one's doing 420,000 milliseconds. That's 420 seconds. For people that don't want to do the math, that is seven minutes. So now we need to know why it's taking so long. As we can see here, it's just a direct select, no joins, no sub queries, nothing. Directly querying the one table. Well, if we look over here to the left, we see this nice little bar right here, which coincides with the bars over here on this graph. The light blue represents buffer locks and the dark blue represents your IO read to disk. I looked up exactly what this is because like a good engineer, you have to read documentation. And I'm not actually reading it. I'm just gonna read this note right here because I'm, I can't be bothered. Basically what's happening is when there's a buffer lock, your buffer is full. And so queries have to wait for that buffer to free up before it can trigger. And there are things in a database that I don't really understand, but basically the buffer can either do a swap or instead of going to the buffer, it reads directly to the disk, I don't know. But the point here is that whenever you have a buffer lock, you're most likely going to have an IO read to disk. Essentially what's happening is the database instance is out of memory and then you have to go to your hard drive, which is much bigger. For anyone that doesn't know, reading from disk is orders of magnitude slower than reading from memory. This causes a chain of events where everything starts going to disk and things get slower and slower and slower and things get queued up. This makes sense because our database instance is a T3 small. If we go over to the instance types, you can see that a T4G or this is the equivalent, but a small has two gigabytes of memory. This is not the root cause. We have to dig a bit deeper to see what is actually taking up all this memory. If we go back to these selects, we can narrow it down to certain parts of the app. You do need to know how your app works to be able to narrow it down. For me, fortunately, I know that when we query for companies, it's only in a single part of our app. I know this because it's a new feature that we just put in. For other people with larger apps, that's more complicated. It might be a bit more tricky, but at the very least, you can tr narrow it down to some parts. I won't bore you with the details, but I went over to the page and I tracked down this little bastard right here. This sneaky, sneaky little rat. Turns out we're doing an empty query for companies and most likely we don't have a guard in the back end. So, um... Yeah, oh boy. What's happening is we're querying the entire 2.4 million rows and returning 50 records per user per reload. Now don't ask why this code is here. Crazy shit happens in startups all the time and we just have to fix things as we go along. Anyway, that's it. Got a couple of PRs that need to be merged to fix this and you know, maybe I'll report back with the results. But otherwise, hope this was informative. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. That's all, bye.